All right, this video is about related rates. These are just three examples from the textbook uh, Stewart 5E, Edition 5 Calculus, Section 3.9, 10, 18, and 26, even problems. Common sense says at noon, ship A is 150 kilometers west of ship B. Ship A is sailing east at 35 kilometers per hour. Ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 14? How fast? Again, related rate. So ship A is west. And I'm going to make north of. Ship A is west of B by 150 kilometers. This is at noon. I'm going to put 12 o'clock here so I know pay three. Ship A is sailing east, so it's sailing this way at 35 kilometers per hour. And ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. Alright. How fast is distance changing at 4 o'clock? How fast is distance changing four hours later? Well, again. Distance equals rate times time. You take 25 times 4, point, if you use this point here, I'm going to call this the origin point O. B is going to end up up here in 4 hours, which is 100 kilometers away. And A is going to close the gap here, and it's not scaled. A is going to be 150 minus 4 times 35, right? So. 140, so that's 10 kilometers. And we're going to get the distance D here. And what it's searching for, and maybe I don't call it D, maybe we'll call this Z. Alright, and this is, Ch I'm going to call Y, I'm going to call this X. These are the fixed values. We're looking for DZ, DT. Do you agree? Correct. Right. Pretty straightforward problem because it's Pythagorean theorem based. So Z squared equals X squared plus Y squared. Take the Derivative 2z dz dt equals 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. All the 2s will cancel. And we can calculate z. Um, 400 squared plus 100 is 10 squared. Is it the square root of? And I'm not, I'm not really worried. About reducing it. I'm just going to write it. Square root of 10,100 to Z. We have the hard part of this problem is realizing that if we're defining our variables from the original problem, that dy dt, the vertical, that's a positive 25 kilometers per hour. What about dx dt? Negative, because it's closing the distance. So dx dt is negative 35 kilometers per hour. Alright, and I probably should. Put those facts down here. Just work my way down the page. So now it's just plug and chug, right? The twos cancel, so I'm going to go D, which is 10,100 square root of DZDT equals X, which is 10 times DXDT, which is negative 35, plus Y, which is 100, times DYDT, which is 25. The units are going to work out here. We'll just do some math to see if we get for an answer. So, you take this sum on the this side and this side, we divide by the square root. And I think the sum is negative or positive 2150. But when you do the math, and we can do it in four decimal places, preparing for the AP test, I get 21.3933 kilometers per hour is the, is the rate of change. So it's increasing at this point. That's problem 10. I'm going to read it out loud. Alright, so problem 18 is the next one. A particle is moving along a curve y equals square root of x, a root function. As the particle passes through point 0.42, x equals 4, y equals 2. Okay, that works. Its x coordinate increases at a rate of 3 centimeters per second. How fast is the distance from the particle to the origin changing at this instant? How fast, again, related rate, and make this graph here. We have a root function, we're at 4.2 dx dt is changing at 3 centimeters per minute. And they are asking how fast this rate, which I will call z again, is changing. Because again, when I look at this instant, I see a triangle. We see x, y, and z. So my equation in terms of variable, all three are changing. So I have to have all three is this. 
And now I can do implicit differentiation, or we can, before doing that, we can make a realization. I don't know the rate of change of y, but I have a relationship. Y is the square root of x. So before I do the related rate, I might make this change. I can say, hey, I know it's x squared plus the square root of x squared equals z squared. x squared plus x equals z squared. At least then it's only two variables where we're thinking we want to find this, d, 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 t. I should have said that over here. That is our rate of change. That's what we want to find. Distance to the origin. How fast this is changing that rate. And now I can do the first differentiation. 2x dx dt plus 1 dx dt equals 2z dz dt. So this time I can't cancel the 2's. I got the key for And I think we know x is, is at 4. We know dx dt is 3. So we know this, we know this, we know this. We want to find this. This is our notes. We have to know z. So we're going to have to take a second to do Pythagorean theorem. 2, 4, 16 plus 4. I'm going to call it the square root of 20. And again, no reason to reduce at this point. We know it's 2 times square root of 5, but we don't have to do that unless it's giving us an exact answer. So 2 times 4 times 3 plus 1 times 3 equals 2 times the square root of 20 dz dt. And if we solve for dz dt, which the units are going to be centimeters per second. I'll flip it around. dz dt equals 3.0187. Four decimal places. And that is how fast the rate of change from the distance from the origin. So we could do that to distance at any point. We could go distance from the origin to that point. We could have gone from 0.11. Just change the triangle. All right, we're going to move on to the next one, number 26. All right, so the final problem today uh, is 26. Two sides of a triangle have lengths of 12 and 15 meters. The angle between them is increasing at 2 centimeters or 2 degrees per minute. How fast is the length of the third side increasing when the angle between the six, six, six sides is 60 degrees? So what they're telling you is there's two sides here, 12 meters and 15 meters. You can see on my picture here, I drew those. And there's an angle between them at 60 degrees. But that angle, which I'm going to call A, is changing. That angle is changing at 2 degrees per minute, a rate. All right. Now, on the AP test, these would usually be in radians, not in degrees. So you have to come up with a relationship because it's asking us how fast the third side is changing. Okay. I will use geometry notation, use little a. So, how fast? The unknown here is how fast is the A, DT, changing? All right, it's not a right triangle, all right? We're not sure what kind of triangle it is. Actually, at this instant, I do believe it is a right triangle. But to keep it in the spirit of things, we have side, angle, side, law of sines fails. I think we have to use law of cosines, all right? But the beauty here, if I call this A, and I call this B, and I call this C, what is DB, DT, and DT? I'm the doctor, and uh, send it to the office, please. Zero. They are fixed. They save us a ton of problems. All right. They save us a ton of problems. So now that we know this, let's change our variables so it matches my picture. So we know a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. All right. And we know we have to take the derivative. All right. Now. I'm going to write it all out. We definitely know we can skip some stuff. I get 2a dA dt equals 2b dB dt, which is going to go to 0. I agree. 2c dC dt, which is going to go to 0. All right. Now, here's the problem. This would require three steps. All right. But I know these are 0. So I'm going to stop doing this and pretend they're constants because I do not want to do the product rule three times. All right. So, this is, so b squared is 0, c squared is 0, 2bc is a variable, or a constant, not a variable. So we don't have to worry about derivative. So all I got to do is take the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. So negative times negative, I get 2bc sine of a. dA, capital dA dt. Because the derivative of a is 1 dA dt. Well, think about it. We don't know a yet, but that's calculatable based on 
what we have. We know B, we know C, we know A. We want to find the A to T. No, we know B. We want to find oh. the other D A to T. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, <laughs> you're right. You're right. Shoot. Problem with geometry. Yes, yeah, so we know this. So we know everything, but we're going to calculate the A. All right. Now, we could use law of sines. We also might notice that since it's a 60 degree angle, no, I, it's, it's not a right triangle. So we're going to have to use law of cosine. We're going to have to use the original formula to calculate the A value. So I'll do that over here. So A squared equals 12 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 12 times 15 times cosine of 60. Cosine of 60 is 1 half, right? So I get A squared equals 144 plus 225. Minus 12 times 15, minus 180. Is that what the end one is? Let's check that. So I get a squared will equal 189. So a is the square root of 189. And I'll just carry it that way. I don't care if it reduces. So now I have all the information I need. So I'll plug this in. And I'm going to get 2 times the square root of 189. Our unknown equals 2, 12, 15, sine of 60 degrees times 2 degrees per minute. Now it's just a math problem. All right. I'm going to try to, try to do this without making a mistake. I get, again, I'll just carry five decimal places, five, three, eight, three, and I'm going to divide that, without clearing my calculator, I'm going to divide that by two and the square root of 189, on both sides, divided by two, divided by 189, square root of my calculator, and I get that the, And centimeters, meters. And you might think that's gigantic. But think about how fast the angles change. Two degrees is a lot. So that is the answer.